Now then, welcome back to the vlog and welcome to Bratislava, Slovakia. A little bit of a random location, but I have been here once before and I always vowed that I would come back here. This is actually my answer when people ask me what the favorite place that I've ever played poker in is. I came here in 2019 for the Banco Cash Game Festival and it was awesome. There was live streams of 1-3 games and 2-5 and it was my first taste of live streams and all of that kind of thing. It's played, yeah. Ooh, interesting rubber card. Sam will not be folding anymore. No. And Sam is just going to absolutely snap <laughs> this off. Um, <laughs> Uh, let's see how quickly Sam calls this. Oh, there it is. There it is. <laughs> you know him too well, right? Oh, we, absolute Good snap call. Oh, he's going to make him show. Oh. I loved it. I loved the city, and I said I would come back, so here I am. There's actually some English guys here right now that I'm meeting up with. We're about to go go-karting, so some of that is going to be included in this intro. We're going to have some side bets on that, obviously, and then we're going to jump into a tournament. 250,000 euros guaranteed tonight, and cash games following that. So review on go-karting, very, very fun. Uh, also very expensive if you're not very good at side betting. I was given two to one to race someone who has done it before uh, and did not win. So I'm 250 down. Oh, well done. So I'm just having a quick workout before I head down and start play for the tournament tonight. Obviously, if you followed me for a while, you know I don't really play tournaments, but I'm going to be playing this one. So it is a $170 buy-in that I'm going to be playing tonight. And the prize pool is 250K. So they're going to need a lot of entrance for that and I don't think they're going to get it. So I imagine there will be an overlay. Let's get down there and play, shall we? So I jump into the tournament with 170 euros and a dream. I'm hoping it's my first and last buy-in. The starting stack is 40,000 chips and I've bought in pretty late. So as you can see, the big blind is now 1,000. So 40 big blinds and I've seen a few flops and missed already. So I'm actually down to maybe 27 big blinds. The button raises to 2,500. The small blind puts in a call. I'm seeing about seven big blinds dead out there and I want them. I move all in for about 27,000 and they both fold. This next hand is still at the 500, 1000 blind level. There's been a raise under the gun to 2000 and a call. With the dead money out there, I once again think it is time to send my whole stack into the middle for about 32,000. This time I do have myself a taker though. The big blind comes out of nowhere and reshoves. The other two players get out of the way and it is a flip, unfortunately. Ace king against pocket queens, all in at risk within the first round of play. It's usually on the river, right? So that was me playing a poker tournament. Thank you all for watching and see you next time. Okay, clearly I'm kidding. I love paying way too much to be a one bullet wonder. And take two seems to be off to a promising start when the first playable hand I get is pocket aces. I open up to 4k off of about a 31k stack. I cut off and both blinds call. The flop is 946 with the flush draw present, a little bit more wet and connected than I would have liked. It checks to me and I decide I'm going to go for a small bet size here and try and build the pot up a little bit and then jam some safe turns. Only the cutoff calls and we are heading to a turn heads up. The turn is the five of clubs which connects the board even further. I decide to slow down and check and the opponent puts me all in. I have about 22,000 left behind and the pot as you can see is 28,000 before his bet. I expect to be beat a decent portion of the time but there is still plenty of draws available too and with a stack to pot ratio of less than one I just don't really feel like folding aces here when rebuying is an option. I send it in there to see what we're up against and the news is not good. The opponent rolls over pocket sixes and we're going to need some big help on the river and GG to bullet two. <laughs> Right, it is now the next day and that was honestly a pathetic showing yesterday. I think the problem is I'm just really inexperienced with short stack tournament play and for my final attempt at this tournament today, I'm going to buy in earlier on in the day so I have more big blinds and deeper stacked and hopefully I'll be more in my element and I'll be able to run up a stack, have more big blinds when it gets to that later stages period of the tournament and stand more of a chance of making it through to day two. So I'm going to go and chill for a few hours and then head in and buy in pretty much at the start of play today for the third attempt. A little bit of a scheduling mishap from me here. Uh, basically, the tournament started earlier today than it did yesterday. So thinking I was coming down at 7 p.m. to get 100 big blinds, it's actually going to be like 35 or 40 big blinds, which was not the plan. And it's back in my kind of shorter than my comfort zone stack range. I'm probably going to fire it again or there is a 10 p.m. turbo. So I'm not sure which one of those I'm going to do yet, but I'll tell you in a second when we start playing it. 
I went for the regular flight, hoping that in the later stages it would be deeper stacked and slower pace. Hopefully, it's third time lucky. Right, back amongst it, and unfortunately fairly shallow, only 25 big blinds to start here. In the big blind with queen six of clubs. Middle position opens to 3,500 for just over a min raise, small blind calls, and getting a million to one, I complete. The flop is pretty much exactly what I had in mind, queen six eight, so I flop two pair, there is a flush draw present, and I check to the preflop aggressor. Sadly, he quickly checks behind, and the turn is the ace of hearts. After raising from middle position and then checking back this flop, I think the middle position player will have plenty of ace X that he now wants to bet for value, and his bluffs might want to use this as a scary card to represent. With that in mind, I check to him again, and he bets 5k. The small blind gets out of the way, and I decide to call with his hand instead of raising to protect my fairly weak big blind range that's going to have a lot of one pair holdings that want to call here. The river is the seven of spades, and without much thought, I check again in flow. In hindsight, I think a lead is at least worth considering since this is kind of a scary river, and he may well decide to check back some ace hex holdings that would call a bet. As played, river goes check check, and we scoop a nice one. The blind level has now gone up to 1k, 2k, and I'm in the small blind with king jack off. The button, who has been crazy so far, opens to 4.5k. And I decide I'm going to shove here. He's going to have a very wide range. We've so far seen 5-3 suited and 8-9 off in his shoving preflop range. So for about 25 big blinds here, I think King Jack off in this configuration especially is going to be good enough to go with. The big blind folds and the button doesn't waste much time before putting in the call. I show him the King Jack and somehow he has pocket queens. Oh, please. I like it. I like it. At this point, I move to a new table. As you can see, my chips are still in the rack, and I look down at pocket queens in the small blind. Under the gun has raised to 5.5k. It folds to me, and I put in a 3-bet to 20,000, knowing that this will leave him with only about 50k behind if he does call, and that wouldn't be too hard to get the rest of the money in. Under the gun calls, and I get a nice clean flop, 9 high, and decide to go for a small c-bet. I continue for 12k, so just under one third pot, and before long, the opponent moves all in, I snap it off, and we're up against pocket jacks. <laughs> It feels like some momentum is really building now and literally as I'm still stacking the chips from the last hand, I'm now on the button and I get dealt pocket jacks. Under the gun opens to 5k, so a 2.5x, and I decide to get a little bit sneaky and trappy here and put in a call with the jacks on the button. This works perfectly as the small blind now moves all in for a short stack of about 40,000. The under the gun player that I'm very deep with now nonchalantly puts out a min raise to about 70k. And suddenly I find myself in a huge spot here. I've massively underrep my hand, me and under the gun are very very deep, both of us have an above average stack at this point in the tournament, and I think the small blind can be pretty wide here, maybe as wide as any pair and decent broadways. And as for under the gun's range, I think he basically never thinks I'm calling here, and this raise should just clear out my entire range, so he could have something like 10s or 9s or 8s, anything he thinks is ahead of the small blind's range basically. So since that's the case, folding is out of the question since I've played it like this, and calling seems pretty ridiculous as well since it'll be more than half of my stack. So that leaves one other option, and I am all in once again. I'm hoping for no snap call, and even better than that, under the gun actually goes into the tank for an absolute eternity, to the point where I actually have to stop recording because I'm scared I'm going to run out of storage on my phone. That makes me feel like I'm doing very well against his hand and now I'm hoping for a call, which would lead to a chip lead pot taking place. The call does eventually come and it is a dream scenario. My opponents both have ace-queen off, blocking each other's outs, and this is the run out. Don't do it. Stay down low. That'll do it. Yes. So a huge pot comes my way and it feels like at this point all I have to do is maintain composure and I can actually allow myself to start getting a little bit excited about a tournament run. I navigate some small pots for about half an hour before this one comes up where I'm in the big blind with pocket 10s, under the gun shoves for about 45k, give or take 15 big blinds and the small blind thinks for a while and then puts in a call. The way I see it, under the gun doesn't have to be very strong, he has 15 big blinds and he's about to go through the blinds and lose a decent portion of that. Small blind only has one player left to act behind him, doesn't have to worry too much about me, and has a healthy stack that can take the knock if he loses. I imagine his range will contain some low pocket pairs, some broadways, and the occasional trap. I think I'm mostly doing well against both ranges here, I think there's also a chance that small blind calls the 45k and then folds to my all in. His effective stack is about 170k. If that was the case, it would lead to an absolute print situation for me, getting three to one against one weak range. Sadly, that wasn't the case though, and the small blind does wake up with aces, and it is a trap this time. Under the gun has queen jack off. A fairly weak hand as expected, but it actually would have been a flip anyway. We're gonna need some help. 
That is the opposite of help, and I'm going to lose a big one very annoyingly here right before break. Just on break, and that last hand that I showed you, the 10s against the aces, happened literally right before the break. And I've gone from basically chip leader to below average stack. So it was probably good timing to have a break there, walk it off, and go back with a fresh mindset that I'm starting with about average stack. Try and run it back up. Still a long way to go, probably another five hours of play left today to get through to day two. So let's get after it. Between the break and this hand that we're about to cover, some small and medium pots took place. They weren't interesting enough to include, but basically they didn't go my way either. And at this point we're sat with 15 big blinds. It folds to the button, who is the same guy from the last hand, and he makes it two and a half big blinds. I decide to jam my 15 in there with King 10 off. Not sure if this is any good or not. Honestly, tell me tournament people. I'm just figuring it out as I go along here. The button snaps it off and he has pocket kings. Queen R10, you fine? Well, that was a whole load of pain and that is usually how tournaments go. I'm basically of the opinion that I'm just going to quit and retire from tournaments for all time. Until the next one, anyway. Uh, until then, we're going to be playing some cash games and get back to what I know. Thank God. See you next time for a cash game vlog in Bratislava. Thanks for watching. Peace.